other simple creatures around here, Porsche could fit its 517 barrels. 4.0 liter naturally aspirated flat six to a mobile library, and we'd probably call it good. So it's powering for an engine of that magnitude and magnificence to get lost almost immediately by the car. That's worth a closer look. But it's not like the new 992 generation 911 GT3 RS needs much in the way of close inspection to ascertain its intent. When the people writing a press release feel compelled to mention their company's 194,000 to 300 pounds sports car is road legal, you get some indication of what that machine is all about. Before starting the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel Review Logist without wasting any more time. Let's get right into it. It's hardly surprising, then, that the GT3 RS draws heavily from Porsche's Le Mans class winning 911 RSR and 911 GT3 R customer race car or that it produces 409 kilograms of downforce at 124 miles per hour and 860 kilograms of an aero-derived chunk at 177 miles per hour. If you can take in the number, stature, and prominence of wings, diffusers, and fins and not arrive at that must-stick like puppy poop to a plush toy, you've likely not found much joy in aerodynamics or, indeed, scatological semiles. The top speed of 184 miles per hour is equally easy to square up stairs, as is not to 62 times of 3.2 seconds. After all, if you have 517 barrels motivating 1,450 kilograms through a rapid-fire 7-speed PDK gearbox and anything approaching decent traction, you're not going to plod away like a mule. But that's where the number soup of properly quick machinery will slip one past you. This is a car with twice as much down force as the old GT3 RS and three times as much as the current 911 GT3. And carrying that sort of a drag to just shy of the metric triple ton will take more than even Porsche's flat six can achieve without a little help. But such is the modern sport focus of the new GT3 RS that it even has an F1-style drag reduction system, and the mechanism matches F1 pretty closely. To look closely at the rear wing's uprights and spot the servos, ready and waiting to go from full slipstream to maximum down force at the push of a button. And, as per the Bugatti Viron et al., the rear wing will also act as an air brake during emergency braking at high speeds, which does make us wonder if a future track driver could be relying on air brakes that don't deploy due to some too timid pedal pushing. Then again, given the standard fit brakes for the GT3 RS are a massive 408 mm up front and 380 mm at the rear vice gripped by six and four pot calipers respectively, you'll have to have a dispensary's worth of damn brave pills before you spontaneously straighten out a corner. If that still seems like a risk you're not ready to run, Porsche also offers the option of ceramic brakes with an extra two millimeters of diameter up front and another 10 at the rear. And there's something to be said to kick the brake pedal like a mule at every brake marker and let the massive discs, ABS, and air brake work in concert. Finesse is great and all, but the brute force has generally worked for us. Should brute force not work in your favor, there's this long-standing, no-cost clubs port pack adds the rollover bar, six-point harness, and fire extinguisher you'll need to find 10 tenths another day. This is still Porsche, of course, so you can pay through the nose. Other orifices are available for a carbon fiber rollover bar to save six kilos and forged magnesium wheels to recoup another eight. On that note, the idea of someone with the cash to splash on a GT3 RS choosing not to go the whole hog with options or at least leaping after the no-cost go racing club's port pack seems a bit of a mental leap for us. But then again, we're simple creatures. Well, there you have it, the complete review of the Porsche 911 GT3 RS. If you liked the video, then make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel Review Logist. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below.